Welcome to Cybertech 2020, one of the world's biggest cyber technologies conferences. It's bringing 18,000 people over the course of three days to answer a simple question. How do you protect the economy and nations around the world from cyber criminals and terrorists? We came from Ghana, we are about 20 in number, and um, we all IT companies, we want to explore more on the cyber security to be able to get or leverage on the technology and take it back home. We know Israel is advanced, well advanced in cyber technology. And so Ghana as a developing country, we decided to take the advantage and come and learn more, know more, get more insight and also to get some kind of partnership. You know, every single year, the economy loses about $6 trillion to cyber crimes. And that's a number that's only going to go up as more and more of the global economy ends up being digitized. And that's the thing that many people around here are trying to ask, how are you going to fix that problem? So as, as you can see, there's a lot of investment in this industry. A lot of uh, new young companies are uh, being raised uh, because this is a dynamic environment. So a lot of uh, the, the attack surface become much more complicated, which requires actually a lot of different uh, different uh, technology solution in order to protect the organization. So the size is much much higher than uh, what what it used to be. Israel was one of the first uh, countries which realized that investing in cybersecurity is really critical for the for the state, but also for the economy. Uh, the Israeli government supports uh, the startup companies, uh, and, the, and what we do have is source of people, young people, which are well educated and uh, deal with this type of uh, technologies and, uh, and platform since they are 18 years old, and they really have a lot of uh, deep experience, not just about how attacker works, but also how to defend uh, the, the country, defend the organization, and it, it, it creates a great ecosystem uh, to build a new startup company, but also so long-term uh, companies which can stay uh, for the long term and become leading companies in this field. And we have a lot of examples. And uh, Sandbank is one of the best examples of a company which started 20 years ago and become now one of the top cybersecurity companies in the world. It's also a matter of economic development. As the cyber crime industry increases, also the cyber defense industry skyrockets. And Israel seems to be at the heart of that. You know, IAI, the military contractor, is also pointing out that they're training people to help grow the national economy. Now, when we're talking about developing countries, cyber has a huge economical benefit. Now, today uh, I can share with you a recent study that was conducted by the CSIS, the Center for Strategic Studies. That they show that presently there is a so shortage of 314,000 cyber professionals. Now, this is a huge number. This number also drives one of the, uh, I would say, key challenges in cyberspace, and this is the uh, talent gap. Today, there are not enough cyber defenders to counter cyber attacks. This means that if a country, for example, would establish a cyber academy and generate cyber professionals, they would A, be able to protect themselves better, and B, be able to answer a global need, bring in more salaries, which normally are high salaries in cyberspace, and directly affect their GDP. And there are researchers by the World Bank that shows that countries that invest in ICT and in cyber actually see a growing trend in their GDP. Of course, it's not just civilian technologies. Militaries and governments are trying to answer what will the next threat look like as they tackle next generation cyber warfare. Enemies, terrorists and other states aren't launching physical attacks as much anymore. They can launch a cyber attack. And the challenge with a cyber attack is knowing who launched the attack in the first place and what the proper way to respond even is. Cyber attacks uh, are interesting uh, because of many aspects, but one of the main aspects is the attribution. Okay, you cannot say who attacked you, who is really the, the, the person, organization, or whatever behind uh, uh, the attack. So using the cyber domain as an attack, as a, uh, as a, a way to disturb the other or, or uh, perform some military action is known. Okay, it's done uh, all over the world. The Iranian, as far as I know, I'm only reading newspapers, are achieving uh, good capabilities, advanced capabilities in the cyber domain, so they're using it.
the attribution is difficult. This is why, uh, uh, you know, it's easy to say it's the Iranian or the Chinese or maybe some other entity that uh, have some agenda here. Uh, we, uh, we don't know. I don't know personally. Okay, but uh, uh, this is, I guess, why uh, uh, if they are uh, uh, doing this attack, they are doing it. The thing that needs to be done in order to ensure global cyber safety is to add a little piece of information to each packet that is sent around the global internet. And this packet will indicate where this, uh, and this uh, little uh, bit of information will indicate where the packet came from. If we know this, we know who attacked us. If we know who attacked us, we can attribute the attack. If we can attribute the attack, there is deterrence.